no, not that one. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Ready to be milked? Oh yeah. Come on. Holy smokes, is that ever full? I have too many to do by hand right away. <laughs> <laughs> Twice a day. Yeah. Um. Uh, well, that's that's. Uh, well, I don't sure. That's a good question. <laughs> wow, I, I yeah. didn't realize. Are all goats? Twice a day. I had no idea. Yeah. Wow. It can't even keep it. Yeah. So. And when, when can you start milking them? At what age? Uh, usually yearling. Like, you, you, well, obviously you breed them. Yeah. And, and uh, but usually we don't breed till a, a year. Okay. And then, uh, then you know, the older she's two years old. This oh, one. Yeah. Look, the yearling daughter is a little bit smaller. So. What? Uh, that depends again on how well they're looked after. Right. There's a food crisis sweeping around the world right now, and if you take a look at Tunisia or Egypt, at least part of the reason being given for the revolution has to do with the skyrocketing cost of food, and people can't afford it. Around the world, there have been natural disasters in Australia, Pakistan, uh, Asia, there's frost. Right now, the news is reporting that frost in Mexico is going to affect the price of tomatoes and cucumbers. There must be some more to it. And if you take a look at the news headlines, three years ago, April 28, 2008, making a killing from the food crisis. The world food crisis is hurting a lot of people, but global agribusiness firms, traders and speculators are raking in huge profits. That was three years ago. Something to think about. And listen to this. Much of the news coverage of the world food crisis has focused on riots in low-income countries where workers and others cannot cope with the skyrocketing cost of staple foods. Three years ago. Well, the riots have turned to revolution now, and that's going to keep going. But the thing is that it's also coming now to North America. The news is full and whether it's in Canada, Canadian news, or American news, that the cost of food is going up big time. Get ready for this. It's going to go way up. Now, is that happening because of real, genuine shortages, cost increases? Is the guy that is chopping the uh, sugar cane in the fields in Dominican Republic, in Jamaica, or Brazil, going to be earning more money? Or is it because speculators and investors have decided to gouge the hell out of food? Serious questions, especially when it comes to big corporations, because don't forget, big corporations were buying up mom and pop farms all over North America, making making them into big agribusinesses. Because, as they said, scale. You know, they could have a big farm operate more effectively, more efficiently than small farms could. So there's scale in size. Thus, they developed new seeds for wheat, corn, that would create more production per acre in bushels than ever before. I mean, in some instances, doubling it. Chickens that used to take 12 weeks to get to uh, market size, in farms today take five weeks, five weeks. So what is happening? Who's responsible for the high food prices? I think there should be real investigations into this, genuine investigations, and not leave it up to big business, agricorp, uh, or uh, stock markets, investors, and others to decide about the food. Because it's not, not about the food that I eat. It's about the food that kids are getting. Kids, when families can't afford to feed their kids before they go to school. It's about the people starving to death, whether it's in Africa or wherever. These things must be looked into deeper than just taking the word of, well, price of food is going up. At least that's how I see it.